Well, hello again, everyone. Welcome to uh, Art Regner's video blog. We're not in the sports corner today. We are at Michigan Stadium again in the visiting coaches room. This would be the Michigan State coaches room. Uh, we're in Ann Arbor, site of uh, today's uh, very uh, emotionally draining game, I think, for the fans and probably for the players. As Michigan does not score a touchdown yet, they do defeat Michigan State after State had won the last four years. The Wolverines win on a Brendan Gibbons. 38-yard field goal with five seconds left as they beat the Spartans by a score of 10 to 12. We are in Ann Arbor, as I said. We'll always give you an establishing shot. And uh, there's the uh, end zone. There's Michigan Stadium right there. And let's go back and uh, talk about this game. Um, really, I want to first say I give Michigan State a lot of credit. I thought that that fake punt... Uh, deep in their own end was a great play, a great call by Mark D'Antonio. I thought the Spartans have uh, uh, played a very, very spirited, great football game. Their defense uh, lived up to the advanced billing, even though I know some Spartan fans I talked to after the game thought that perhaps Michigan State defense is great until they really need a stop. Well, I think that uh, that's just a disappointment in the uh, loss, I think, by Spartan fans. I think their defense is very, very good. I thought Andrew Maxwell acquitted himself, and uh, Le'Veon Bell, Michigan was geared to stop him, and they did. He only had 68 yards on 26 carries and averaged, I think it was 2.8 yards a carry. But what I really want to stress today is uh, Denard Robinson and uh, how this game was big for Denard Robinson, whether or not the, the Michigan uh, uh, coaching staff or the Michigan football team really want to... Uh, uh, address that or not. Uh, Denard did not play extremely well in this game, but he made plays when he had to. Even though they didn't score, he had a big 44-yard run in the fourth quarter uh, that uh, allowed Michigan to pin Michigan State deep on their eight-yard line, even though Michigan had the punt, but his 44 yards set up that field possession game. And then with two minutes left in this ball game, Michigan took over and Denard Robinson uh, led Michigan uh, to the game-winning field goal by Brendan Gibbons. Uh, Drew Dillio, who had a fabulous game, almost 100 yards in receptions today, made a 20-yard pass play, or I think it was 21 yards. Let me uh, double-check that. 20-yard pass play uh, from uh, Denard to uh, Drew Dillio uh, that went down to the Michigan State 20-yard line. There was 18 seconds left in the game when that play happened, and the clock ran down to five seconds on that play. Michigan got a first down. And they kicked it uh, to, uh, did they spike the ball, went down to nine, and then Denard, or pardon me, Brendan Gibbons uh, uh, made the 38-yard uh, field goal. I was on the field. I have to be honest with you, I thought that it wasn't going to be very good. I, I, it looked like the ball, I was standing on the right side, and I thought, oh, geez, I think this kid's going to miss it. And it, it went in. Brendan Gibbons, uh, um, another big kick. He won the Sugar Bowl last year, and you have to uh, compliment him on, uh, uh, on a great job. Uh, I, I think that this rivalry... Uh, I think Mark D'Antonio, you have to give him a lot of credit. I, I really believe that. He has established this. His whole goal, and I think you can tell by the way Michigan State approaches this with some of the trick plays that they did today and just how they were prepared to play, uh, that this is their game and Mark D'Antonio realizes that if we can beat Michigan, we have a foothold in this state, we get notoriety, and they almost did it again today. I mean, Michigan did not score a touchdown. If you would have told me before the game that Michigan would have won this game without scoring a touchdown, I would have thought that you were crazy or that Michigan's defense shut them out. I'd like to say something about Michigan's defense as well. I thought that they played very well. They had one bad uh, series where they gave up a touchdown to uh, Michigan State, but Michigan State opened up the game a little bit on them, uh, did a little bit of play-action pass, and I think a young defense, which Michigan still really is, I think sometimes you can fool a young defense, and I think that's what happened. But Michigan did make adjustments, and when they needed the stop, after Michigan punted down deep, it was three and out, which allowed the offense to get the ball with two minutes left, and which eventually won to the uh, game-winning field goal. Now, what does this mean for Michigan State? Well, obviously, they're out of the Legends division at this point. They're not going to be able to win it. Um, they're at Wisconsin. Then they have games against Northwestern and Nebraska at home. Uh, I think it's going to be tough. Will they be bowl eligible? I'd like to see them bowl eligible. I'd like to see them do very well from here on out because I do not believe that they're a bad football team. I really don't. I think that the Michigan State Spartans, if they can iron a few things out, execute a little bit better, uh, I think that, uh, I, I, look, I thought they were the best team in the Big Ten when the season started, and, and it didn't happen for them. 
but I really did. I really thought that they were the best team. Uh, and, you know, they've lost two games to Michigan and Ohio State by a grand total of three points. I mean, it's it's tough. The Big Ten, whether you think it's a good conference or not, it's very competitive and it's very, very balanced. And unfortunately, if you're a Spartan fan, you've been on the wrong end of some very, uh, very close ball games. What does this mean for Michigan? Well, Michigan next week goes to Nebraska, which looks like perhaps the winner uh, of that game, depending on what Iowa does with Penn State tonight, is going to have the inside track on the Legends Division title. So that's absolutely huge. Uh, I think that Michigan needed this game in the worst way. There was no way that they wanted uh, to uh, have Michigan State beat them five years in a row. It has never been done uh, by Michigan State. They've never beaten Michigan five years in a row in football. And you could certainly feel um, the whole team kind of just exhale after the game was over that Michigan finally did defeat them. Uh, and uh, they got, as uh, I, I believe it was uh, Jordan Kovac, senior co captain uh, jo Jordan Kovac said, we got the monkey off our back. Brady Hoke, uh, he seemed to be a little bit more um, grounded, shall I say, and said, you know, we've got bigger fish to fry. This is a rivalry game. It's always big, but we want it, but our season has not ended. Uh, we have bigger goals in mind. So he was, you know, being very, very focused. I think he knows they're going to have a tough game against the Cornhuskers next week, next week, especially first time ever, too, historical, too. First time ever Michigan has played in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska next week. So that should be a, a great game. And as I said, unfortunately, uh, many of us will be watching the World Series or be at the World Series if we're so privileged. So, uh, but... Another thing, too, that this game and why it was historic and, and the historic importance is that Michigan is the first college football team to win 900 games. This was Michigan's 900th victory uh, in 133 years of football. Uh, so there were a lot of things uh, today that Michigan was able to do in of historic proportions. They denied Michigan State beating them five times in a row. That's never happened, as I said. And they won, the program won its 900th game overall, the first college football team to do that. So overall, this was a great game uh, as far as drama. It was kind of ugly. Uh, there was only one touchdown scored. Um, there were five, what, five field goals in this game, four by Michigan. Matt Weil attempted a 48-yard field goal because he has a stronger leg for Michigan. His first career attempt, and it was good. Uh, but uh, being down on the field, I can tell you that the excitement down on the field in that fourth quarter was incredible. And I really thought the crowd was well-behaved. You had Michigan Michigan State people next to each other, kind of laughing and joking, that nervous kind of energy that people have with, you know, when they're all uptight and stuff. And So it was very, very good. It was a hard-hitting physical football game. I don't think Michigan State has anything to be ashamed of, but do not kid yourself. This was a game that Michigan needed as a program, and this was a game that Denard Robinson needed as a player. He did just enough to win this football game, and you have to give him credit for that. Uh, he wasn't great, but when Michigan needed to make a play and make a stop, they did, and Brendan Gibbons wins the game for them. So, uh, all in all, uh, a good day for Michigan, a disappointing day for Michigan State, but the way the Spartans played and what they were able to do, you've got to tip your cap to them and wish them the best of luck as their season progresses. And now Michigan in the hunt, uh, remains in the hunt for the Big Ten title. So uh, great game, as I said, and uh, unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. You see, I, I've seen so many sporting events in my lifetime. I've been privileged enough. Uh, but, uh, you know, it never ceases to amaze me uh, just the excitement and the way games sometimes are decided. And yeah, I, I didn't think Michigan was going to have a chance in this game, quite frankly, the way State's defense was playing, and, uh, and they did. So until we meet again, have a safe and pleasant one, everyone. I am Art Regner for FoxSportsDetroit.com, live from Ann Arbor. Bye-bye.